In today's tutorial, we're going to do the City Solarium Throw or the Vintage Sunflower Throw. Either way, same pattern, two different looks. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the City Solarium Throw or the Vintage Sunflower Throw. And what we have here is one particular design where if you change the colors, it completely looks different and it looks amazing. So you could have more of a modern look or more of a vintage look and it all depends on your color scheme. Let's go over some of the pattern details and then let's jump right into today's tutorial. We've got lots of things planned for today. So today's pattern is featuring Bernat Super Value Yarn. It's a wonderful yarn to work with. It's one of my favorites because it is very value oriented and it's very affordable at the same time. So we're, we're going to be using that yarn today. It calls for that in the pattern and of course if you change your colors in that particular line you'll have different ideas as well. We are going to be using a size I, a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook today but the fabulous thing about it is that there's a crochet diagram involved. So then if you don't want to read those instructions but you know how to read this, this is going to be an awesome tool to work with and of course today's tutorial I'm going to be breaking down the steps in order to show you how to do this. There's also an assembly diagram and I'll be talking about that when we get there. Today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to do one block. I'm going to show you how to attach your blocks with an invisible seam and then we're going to just circle the whole thing with a really nice border at the same time. So within today's tutorial let's get started and let's grab your crochet hook and let's begin right away. Before I continue on this tutorial, I've actually just finished this tutorial and I want to leave you with a little bit of advice before we start this tutorial today. I've done an afghan like this before and do you see that each one of these has a different middle but then there's a, diff a darker color and then a white? That's what makes your eyes pop to this particular thing and that it's very uh, standard all the way around. I've done another afghan like that where it was not so obvious and that I had petals that were all different colors and nothing was consistent and it looked like a jumbled mess. So what I'm recommending to you is that if you're going to be consistent on a pattern like this, just be consistent in certain visual areas that grab your attention. These petals will grab your attention no, any other time. So if you like kind of like the uh, um, psychedelic kind of look or just very mismatched or very um, just scrap gan or oriented, there's nothing wrong with that. But you may be very disappointed if you get yours done and you don't realize that it, there's consistency of colors in the way that they're being used. And when you see your version versus this one, you may not enjoy your version at the end when you realize that it is the consistency of color that makes this thing pop. So that's just advice. Take it or leave it and we'll let you continue along with today's tutorial. So here's the block that we're aiming for today and I think it's quite a fabulous one. It's got lots of open work and of course you change your colors you're going to have a completely different design. This is a really easy concept to follow. Now if you're doing this particular pattern what I recommend to you is do it like an assembly line crochet. So this here is a different color and it's the same color in all of the different uh, squares and what we want is that you want to do all of them at the same time. So there's 30 squares required for this throw. So do all of the middle ones and then come back and then do all all of the next one then come back and do all of the next one and then come back and do all of the next. When you do it that way you only have to remember the pattern a couple times and then it becomes old hat and then you can build your whole uh, a project together and by the time you get to the end all of your squares will be done at the same time. So let's uh, get started right in the middle today and here we go. So here's our diagram we're going to work on. We're going to chain five and then we're going to uh, make a ring and then we're going to chain three and then do 23 double crochets all the way around. And this here in the rules of uh, crochet with this particular pattern, the chain three counts as a double crochet so there's a total of 24. It's really important right in this particular stage of all of your squares to make sure you get 24 right off the hop because if you don't get 24 here none of this other stuff will stay in balance. So let's grab our hook now and let's go. So let's create a slip knot to begin and a 5.5 size I crochet hook today. We're going to start off uh, with your slip knot. Remember it never counts as one and then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four and five and insert your hook into the beginning chain just like so. Yarn over, pull through and through and then you have the center ring of your square. In the next round what we want to do, see the straggler? I want you to wrap it around the outside and hold it there and when we go around the next round we're going to trap it right underneath and then you don't have to worry about sewing it in any loose ends at the end. So let's move along to round number one. In round number one we're going to chain up three, one, 
two, three, this counts as a double crochet and I want you to put 23 double crochets into the center ring. There's not a lot of space so as it gets more we can shift. So let's just start and we're gonna go right into the center of the ring and double crochet and let's count out loud. So we need 23. So that was one, two, and three. See how I'm keeping that straggler piece there? I'm just keeping it so it's wrapped around. So it's four, five, and six, and seven, and eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I'm running out of space so we just, because you're going around the ring, just pull. So make more room. So that was ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. And I wanna just do a double count now. So just count. So one, two, I'm gonna count the first one because there should be a total of twenty-four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. And let's put in some more. So we got twenty. And I'm gonna shift more in the way. So 20 and then 21, 22, 23, and 24. Once you have all 24 in there, I've already just counted so I know it's there. So I'm just going to join it to the top of the beginning chain three that I started with. And you're just gonna pull through and through. And you're now done this particular color. So what I want you to do is take your scissors and just cut your strand and then take this and pull it over and through and what I want you to do is weave this in and out of about an inch or an inch and a half of stitches right in the top just back and forth and what this will do is that the next time you go around this, this will get stuck underneath that next round and then you won't have to worry about sewing it in. So now that you can safely cut out whatever's left hanging out of the middle and then that's out of your way and let's move along to round number two. In round number two we're going to start up and you can see it in the diagram as well. So every one of the double crochets has a double crochet and then each one of those has a space uh, chain one in the middle. So you can start any which stitch you want. It's all gonna balance itself. So I'm just gonna pick one. I, I like to start in different areas when I go to slip stitch um, and start new rounds. Then it doesn't look like it's all being started at the same spot for the whole square. So just going into any one just join it with the slip stitch and then chain three. One, two, three and then that counts as a double crochet. So chain one more. So there's four. Okay? So it's chaining three is your double crochet and chaining one more is a chain one space. So double crochet into the next one. Again keeping this straggler down on top of the line and it'll get stuck underneath and then chain one. Move to the next double crochet and double crochet into that one and then chain one. Keeping that straggler in and you're gonna do that all the way around for double crochet and then chain one. And once you get enough space like I'm about to do now, I can just let this straggler fall in behind and I'll deal with that later. Now I'm coming up to where I wove, I woven in the, the loose end from the last round. Let me show you what to do with that. So I'm just double crocheting and chaining one. Okay, so here, here's the next one. So what I wanna do is that when I go into these stitches where I did the join, I want to go in but I wanna slide in so that the straggler remains on top of the stitch. Do you see that? Oops, I didn't chain one last time. Makes a difference. So you're going in so that it gets stuck underneath so then chain one. So go into the next one, you'll see it there. Just make sure that it catch it on top. So if it's underneath, like meaning if I miss it completely and it stays underneath like this, watch. See it's underneath, it won't get stuck in there. It won't be caught. So you make sure you go and slide underneath. So please do that all the way around. Chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And we make sure that we have our counts right when we get back to the other side and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around and I'm on my last one. I gotta make sure I chain one first and then I just go to the third chain up. There was four, you remember? Just go to the third chain up and just do a slip stitch and then that's done. So this color is completely done at this point. So let's trim that one. Do the same concept of weaving it in and out 
Uh, this one going about an inch or so, probably about two inches in this case. Um, just in and out of the stitch work on top and then that will get stuck underneath then in the next round that we do. The more times you can do that in a pattern, the less times you have to pull out your darning needle. But unfortunately in the next uh, two rounds, or actually we have to do two rounds of the same color, you're going to have to use your darning needle to finish off the final end and that's just because you want it to have a good clean line. So here, this is where we were hiding the color. So that's now buried in, we're confirmed. We can just trim that right down to the project, turn it over. The brown, because I was doing that, I can trim that now right to the project and now I leave the last straggler here until that has been covered. So let's move on to round number three. Back on the diagram we're moving up to round number three. So we've just gone two rounds just like so. Now number three we're gonna come along, we're gonna start and we're gonna start right on top of a post and there is a method to the madness of what you're about to see and it took me about two of these to get, not two squares but actually two times to do it then I realized that there's a pattern. So I'll tell you that pattern right off the front. So we're gonna start off and chain two and then we're going to go into a space and then chain 11 and then single crochet back into that space then chain two and then single crochet into a post. We skip one space, double crochet our two chains and then single crochet here, chain 11 and single crochet there, chain two and then single crochet into another post. So what's happening here in the pattern is that whenever you're doing these petals, you'll notice that it's in a space and whenever you're in between, you're going to be playing within a top of a post. And so you will have a total of eight of these petals going all the way around your work. So also you wanna make sure that you did have actually a total of 24 going all the way around on your last round because if you don't, this will not work out for you. So let's move along and do round number three. Let's move along and do round number three. We're gonna do sunflower yellow. Absolutely. It's actually, what's the actual color called on the Bernat Super Value? It is called bright yellow. <laughs> Go figure. It is bright. So what we want is to looking at the right side is that we want any one of these posts. It doesn't matter which one it is. They're all gonna balance out anyway. So just come in and follow the post up. So don't go into a space. Go right into the top of a post. And what I want you to do, this is my ad lib from the pattern. Take the straggler and the yarn, the going to the ball, wrap it around and pull through. Okay. And then take both of them and pull through together. And what that does is it counts as the first stitch. If you do it any other way, you end up with the really obvious uh, area that starts and I don't really like it. So well, I'm gonna have to use a darning needle to get rid of this end in the end. So what I wanna do now is let's start and do the repeat pattern going all the way around. So we're gonna chain two, one and two. So we skip the next space, chain one space and go to the next one. And what we're gonna do is that we're going to single crochet into that space and then we're gonna create the foundation of a petal. So we have to chain 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there's the foundation of a petal. Coming back into that same space, you're going to single crochet. See, there's your big loop. So now you're going to chain two, skip the next space and go right into the top of a post for a single crochet. So if you notice, that's how we started over here. So there's the repeat pattern as you can see it. So chain two, that was one and two. Skip the next space, go to the second space and you're going to single crochet and then chain 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, And then coming into that same space, single crochet. Chain two, Skip the next space, go in the top of a post. Are you starting to see the pattern there? Okay, so these are in the spaces and you can kind of see that there's three of them together and that the single crochet is right in the middle one. So chain two again, one, two, skip the next space, go to the second over and then just go into the space for a single crochet, chain 11, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven and you're gonna come back into that same space for a single crochet. Chain two, skip the next space and go into the next post for our next uh, stitch for a single crochet. Please do that same pattern going all the way around. I'm coming all the way back around and I'm just following the pattern. So I'm going into the next space here and I'm going to be jutting out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10 and 11 and then coming back into that same space for a single crochet and then chain 2, 1 and 2 and then just join it to the beginning single crochet or where you joined it in order to do that. So with the slip stitch and keep on the same color yarn. So if you've done it right you should have a total of 8 petals. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so let's begin and keep this color on and I gotta show you something because something's kinda weird about this pattern which I think you'll love. So here's a sample of what it's gonna look like and when you get all the way around and if you make any assumptions you're gonna go off because I did. <laughs> so the very first time I ever did it I had these petals and they were just flopping all over the place and they were really quite awful. And I thought okay that doesn't look right. So then I went to the next pattern and I was attached my green and there was nothing to attach to. What I completely missed in the pattern because you know I wasn't looking at it carefully enough but there's actually a bridge that is bridging over middle part of the petal to the next petal and that's where the green is holding. Okay, so you just physically cannot see the bridge. If I can try to separate it you might see it. Yeah there it is, right? So there's a bridge that holds that and so these petals then don't become so loosey goosey. They're actually quite um, together. So when we go to do this we're going to be creating the bridge and it's really quite easy and there's gonna be a space in the top for the next layer that comes around but you have to watch for that. But I wanna show you where that bridge is on the pattern so you see it. So here's the pattern and here's the bridge. Okay, I completely missed that when I did it the first time. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna start up and when we go to start up we're gonna start up right here and we're going to do three double crochets into this chain 11 space and then we're and then we're not going to create the bridge the very first time because there's nothing to bridge to and we're gonna carry up and go over one completely without bridging to anything. We're then gonna come back down so there's gonna be a total of seven double crochets up, chain two, seven double crochets down the other side and then we just single crochet into the top of the next single crochet that's down here. We immediately then start up again and we're going to chain three or sorry do three double crochets one, two, three and we're gonna do a slip stitch bridge which joins the third one over which creates the bridge for this to sit on. Then we do four more, chain two and then we do all seven. So we bridge every time we're gonna go up and start a pedal. The only time that you have to bridge on the other side is that we're gonna come up here and we have to bridge this one. This is the very last one that comes around but we have to create the bridge on this very last one in order to join that together. So we couldn't have done it the first time because there's nothing to bridge to but once we come around we can bridge. So the very last one when we do the bridge and I'll have two that we have to worry about. So let's uh, begin and see if you know what you're doing. <laughs> So keeping the same color we want to chain one and we're going to single crochet right into the top of the first uh, single crochet that we're in. Okay and then we're gonna start going up. So the very first petal remember that there's no bridging. So we're just going to do seven double crochets going up right into the to the chain space. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. So there's one side done. Chain two once you get to the top and then I want you then to come down for doing all seven in a row. So the first one we ever start with we don't do any bridging because there's nothing to bridge to. Okay so that was three, four, five, six and seven. Once you get all seven done and that I'm about to do is that you're just gonna do a single crochet right into the middle single crochet that's right in between the two petals. So when I did this the very first time, the very first sample I did not notice the bridge area and so you end up with uh, eight of these and they're just like they're not joined to anything and they just flop all over the place. So we're gonna start up the next one. So the next one will have a bridge. So we're gonna do three double crochets in a row. So just go reach over Okay and start going in that one. So that's two, this is two and three. Stop. You're gonna create a bridge. To create the bridge you're going to just drop it off the hook. Okay. Count this one here count back up three. One, two, three. Slide it into the top of the third. Pull that through and now you're ready to continue. So there was seven in a row so you did three so that means you got four more left. So that's this is four five, six and seven. And now there's your bridge. 
you see it? So the gapping space that's in the green is actually gonna go right into the space here that creates the separation that's visual. Once you're at the top, chain two, and then down the other side you're going to do seven double crochets because there's nothing to bridge to on that side. So this is three, four, five, six, and seven. Then come down and you're going to single crochet into the middle single crochet in between the petals. So I'm gonna show you the bridging one more time. So you can see how these two are now attached. So we're, we're gonna do it again. So let's go up the next one. So we only do three. So one, two, and three. Stop, take your hook out, go back to the other one, count up three, one, two, three, insert in, pull through, and then finish that one. So this is gonna be four, five, six, and seven. Chain two at the top and then go down the other side for seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And once you got your seven done, middle one again of the single crochet in between the petals is going to get one single crochet. Continue this idea going all the way. Don't forget to do your bridge. I'm gonna do the last one with you because we got a bridge going up and we have the bridge going down the other way and that therefore it's all bridged all the way around. So I'll see you back there in just a moment. So let's do the last petal together. So I've got my single crochet in and now I'm just immediately ready. So you remember you have to uh, do three double crochets in a row. So one, two, and three. This row of all of them I find is the slowest of all um, but you know what this is the row that makes the most impact. So one, two, three, count back, do your bridge. Okay, just slip stitch and then just start again. So th this is four, five, six, and seven. Perfect. Chain two and we have to create the bridge on the way down. So we're gonna do four in a row. So one, two, three and four and we're gonna do our bridge slightly different this time. So this is the fourth one. So I want you to reach to the third one, insert your hook, pull through and through. Okay, so here's where it gets a little bit tangled up. Just make sure you continue on this same one here. Okay, cause it's gonna pull into it and continue the last three. So one, so I'm just kinda pulling it up, two and three. And do not forget you still have to join this with the very beginning single crochet down here. So we're just gonna go in and pull through and through. So what I uh, recommended in the very beginning, remember I was talking about using a darning needle? This is where you need to use it because the reality is, is that you can't hide this one really effectively without really worrying about it coming out. So for a few minutes that it's gonna take, let me just show you. I'm going to put on my darning needle I really don't mind sewing. Some people have a phobia of it. Um, I'm not one of those people. So I'm going to push it through to the back side of the project. Okay, let's turn it around. Okay, so if you go in and out of your work, so just go down, staying on this side of it. Okay, just so don't protrude to the good side of the afghan. So you come through with one, going back in the other direction in a different path, but similar direction for two and back in the other direction, the final time for three. And you can completely then cut this down right to the project and the, not ever have to worry about that falling out. And this other one that is in there, the yellow that I started with, now I know it's got a slip knot on the end of the other side and I did it kind of short because I'm not very intelligent. So I'm going to just insert my needle in because I know we all do this. <laughs> I ain't the only genius in the, <laughs> in the toolbox. So um, what we have here is that I'm just going to insert it here. <laughs> I might be the only genius in the toolbox. You never know. So we're gonna just pull that through <laughs> and you're just gonna pull it through so that it goes through. So now it's through more fibers than what it was and now I can safely trim that down and now I graduated from leaving the toolbox. So this other uh, one that we did is completely buried as I 
wove that in. So that's out. So I have absolutely no tails hanging out of this thing. So this is what it looks like at this point and now we're gonna start the fun part of adding in two rounds of doing the green and then that's it for each one of the squares until it comes to the final assembly. So you're more than halfway done I think at this point. So I got my trusty diagram back up and you're going to notice here is that the the um, square or is still going to be round after this next round. It's not until the next one after that that it squares off. So you're going to notice that this is a pretty easy pattern to follow. So if you really kind of look at the, the example that I did, the first set of green is looking identical to each one all the way around. It's actually a round circle. The only difference is that the next time this makes it force out to look like a square. So if you can see it from a circle point of view which you can really actually see it then you're gonna find this is an easy pattern to remember. So let's move along and try you on round number five and you're gonna change your color to whatever color that you wish. In my case I'm gonna go back to the green. So I'm gonna start my next color and I'm gonna leave a longer string. <laughs> I don't want it to end up back in the toolbox. So what we have is that we're gonna start off and it doesn't matter which petal what we're gonna start off with. Just pick one of them, eeny meeny miny mo. And you're just gonna just go into the top and just again this is my own ad lib. Take the yarn strand and the loose end. Go up over, pull it through. Okay? And yarn over and pull through. That counts as your first double crochet in my rules. So just leave that down there and you're going to use a darning needle to hide this loose end in afterward anyway. So what I want you to do is that I want you to um, start uh, going around. So we're gonna chain up one. So we're chaining one and I want you to reach to the bridge. Okay, so go right over here. You're gonna think wow that's a long way. It is a long way. It's all good. And we're gonna put three double crochets into that bridge. So one, two, and three. And once you get three done you're gonna chain one so that will separate that and then you're gonna do another three. So one, two, and three. So you see that this just covered that bridge so that it looks like the petals completely separate from each other but in actual fact they're attached behind the scenes. Once you get that third one in chain one and come to the top of the next chain two. So every time you're at the top of the these chain twos you're always going to do the same thing. Okay, um, you are going to ch uh, single crochet, chain three, one, two, and three, single crochet back in. And then we're gonna start one of these again. So you have to chain one, reach to the next bridge and do three double crochets. So one, two, and three. Perfect. Then chain one, that's the middle part and then back in again for three. So one, two, and three. Once you've done that chain one first, go to the next chain two at the top, single crochet, chain three and single crochet and begin again. So again it's just chain one, reach over, do three double crochets into the bridge, chain one, three double crochets into the bridge, chain one and then back to the outside again. Please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. I've just got my two sets in there. I just got to chain one first. Now when we started we did one single crochet and then we immediately started over here. So this means when we come back here we got a single crochet, chain three, one, two, three and then just join it to the beginning of where we did the join of the single crochet. So that will complete this uh, revolution all the way around and what we want to do we got one more revolution before each of the squares are done and what I want you to do at this point is that you're going to notice that it's still completely round. So what we're going to do in the next round is that we're gonna make this square. So it's not a big deal and you're going to also notice that this sample looks a little bit different than this sample over here. I block this. I haven't blocked this yet. So you can see the difference of just the way it, it's uh, acting is that blocking really does make a difference on this particular pattern. Let's move along to your final round of doing each of your squares. So in round number six we're now going to convert what is a circle to a square. So you're going to notice there's eight of these uh, three double crochets separated by chain ones, these sections here. So one of them will turn into a square, the middle, the next one will just be flat, the next one will be a square. So if you can get that in your head it's a lot easier. What I found confusing for myself if, if I'm gonna be very honest with you is that after I finished a square, uh, an, a point I wanted to jump into this space. So you gotta remember to skip that space because in the middle you do play in that space 
but on the outsides you don't on these on the on the corners. So this is where if anything you're gonna go wrong probably will be right here but we'll, of course we'll teach it properly here and uh, this round is not a big deal just watch out for that. Let's begin round number six. So round number six we're gonna immediately chain one and we're just gonna come to this space here okay and the first part is going to keep this flat and then this uh, next one here will turn into a corner. So we're gonna go right into the space and we're gonna single crochet. We're going to then single crochet into each one of these three, the chain one space and each one of these three and the chain one space here right across. So let's just start. So we're gonna single crochet in everything that you see including the chain one space. This is gonna make it flat. Okay and then the final chain one space. Now here's the thing. We're not gonna do any single crochet in, in this single crochet but we're gonna immediately jump to this chain three and we're gonna apply three single crochets there. Okay, so now we're ready for a corner. So the corners consist of three double crochets, or sorry five double crochets and three chains. So we're just gonna reach over and see the group of three and then three and the chain one space. You're gonna go right in that chain one space there and you're gonna put five double crochets in there. So one, two, three, four and five. Easy peasy. Now you're gonna chain three, one, two, uh, two and three. Coming back into that same space put another five double crochets in there and that will allow you to turn the corner. So one, two, three, four and five. Now I told you already just in the, just the take before this one. I always wanted to go into the space here. You don't. You wanna go to this chain three space which is in the top of the next petal and apply three double crochets. So our three single crochets. Okay, you're gonna skip over this single crochet and go to the next chain one space and then this will become flat. So see how it's your corner? See the flat corner. So this is the flat section here. So just in the chain one space one single crochet one single crochet into each of these three. One right in the middle which is the chain one space. So right into the space itself. Single crochet into each of these three double crochets and then chain one space. Now we're gonna head to the next corner. So we're gonna jump to this chain three space and put in three single crochets. So one, two and three and let's make another corner. So we just immediately jump right into the middle section here and do five double crochets. So one, two, three, four and five. Followed by chain three, one, two, three and then chain, I'm uh, sorry, uh, five double crochets once again. So one, two, three, four and five and then coming around again. So we wanna jump over this space, go to this chain three space and put in three single crochets. One, two and three. Jump to the next chain one space and this is your flat edge. So please do that same thing going all the way around and you will notice that you're gonna turn yourself right into a square. So I'm coming up all the way around. I got my final corner in. This is the other corner over here. You can see I'm already started right here. So what we have to do is that once this final corner is in we just have to go into this chain three space and apply three single crochets. So one, two and three and when I had you start you chained one and you started in the next chain one space. So all you just need to do at this point is that you just need to slip stitch to the beginning one that you did the single crochet. And now you're gonna fasten off. So this is it how to do one square. So you can just do all your squares the same and then when we come back I'm going to show you how to do an assembly of doing an invisible seam but make sure at this point you wanna get in your loose ends. It's easier to take care of it now than it is to have an entire afghan to worry about it later because a lot of people get really upset with that. So again using the techniques of hiding in your yarn just do so and then when we come back I'm gonna go through the assembly process and then we're gonna do the border after that. 
In the next part of this tutorial we're going to cover on how to do an invisible seam to be able to attach these together. So you end up with a really nice seam line on the front and the back. So it ends up being nice and flat. Sometimes when people uh, single crochet stuff together they end up with the raised ridge. It look, kinda looks like a window pane. Again that's a personal decision. Today I'm gonna show you how to do the whip stitching and, and order a technique that you really can hide that that seam line in. So what's gonna happen here, these ones are blocked meaning I've steamed them and flattened them. This one's not. So you can see that there's a slight difference and there's actually a field difference as well. This one feels softer because I have uh, steamed it already. So what's gonna happen today is that I'm gonna show you how to put these together and I'm going to just run over the diagram with you one more time because I wanna show you something as well. So here's the diagram and what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be sewing together the edges. So the stitches are gonna match each other. So it's gonna match one side versus the other. So we're gonna do that. No big deal and including we're gonna do the edges. So when there's a chaining of three the middle one would link over and if there's another one here the middle one will link to that next one. So that basically you have four stitches that will link together and then we just match them. Now here's the thing. Um, what we're going to do this is that once we do this we're gonna run around the border twice. So we're gonna do everything but we have to get this done. But if I were you and you were me, you have to do a total of 30 of these. When I go to whip stitch, I don't just whip stitch one together at a time. I will take the whole thing and I will whip stitch all the way down, all the way so all of these are attached. I will then whip stitch the next one and next and next. And what's gonna happen is that you'll have them all joined together but then you'll have them not joined in this direction. So then what I do is that I come back and I make sure that I do that. So one going back this way and what's gonna happen when you do it that way you'll save a ton of time if you can just continue to skip over. Con cautious though when you do especially the first one you wanna make sure that you're not gonna accidentally turn any upside down. So it will look visually different if you have uh, one square that is at a place and it looks completely upside down. So just have to watch out for that. So let me show you how to do the invisible seam to join together and I'm going to show you um, that process next. So let's review on doing an invisible seam. So we want to butt them up together and create the seam that looks like it's all part of the project but it's an actual fact it's a hidden one. You're going to notice that they are completely like shaping but once you sew these into position they'll sit flat. So when we go to do these you wanna put them up so that the back sides are facing each other. Okay so they, these are the good side facing up. So just take in your hand just go like this and then they'll come up. So what you wanna do in order to get the invisible seam is that when you do the stitches you see that there's two strands on one and two strands on the other. So what you wanna do when you do the invisible seam is that you wanna go into the far strand of the first one. Okay so the back strand of the first one and then on the other one you wanna come into the front strand of the other just like this. If you go into both it creates a, a very obvious join but if you go into just those two strand, strands only you will find a lot better look and it's called an invisible seam. So without further ado let me show you how to do it and I'm gonna turn a corner in this particular one just to demonstrate it but if it were me I would do it like I suggested going all the way down your particular piece. Make sure that when you go to join that one is not accidentally upside down. So make sure that it's up and then just push them up together like this and you're good to go. Now you wanna use the same color that you did the join with. Okay so it's the green and you wanna create a slip knot on the one side and leave it open. So what I'm gonna do is on the, at, on the corners, remember there was chaining a three going into one strand only. Okay it's the back one of the first one and on the same one in the middle one you wanna come to the front strand like so. And you wanna pull this through but you wanna stop close to this to the um, slip knot and you wanna put your hook through it or your needle through it and just pull on it. Now I want you to take this straggler string and just lean it up over the top because I want you to nail that into position as you go. So starting on the next stitch that's available to you on the back loop on the first one and on the first loop of the next one. Okay so don't go into both strings. Just go around. Okay and when you do this, this straggler I want you to leave it down on top of it and it will get stuck underneath the stitches. If you're not comfortable with that you can always use your darning needle and hide that in afterward. So you got that done. Advance to the next stitch. Okay back loop only. Front loop on the next one. You should be matching your stitches right directly across the road from each other. So whatever stitch you're going into on this side. So this one is going into the second double crochet on this side. So this one here should go into the second one of that side. 
but just of the one strand only. Continuing to leave that straggler down on top you get stuck under position and it's nice. So you're gonna get yourself into a rhythm of doing this. It doesn't take really that long. Um, more people are just prefer to crochet because it's faster. Um, again that's a personal decision. So once you get about an inch or so in you can safely cut that because you, you uh, secured it with a slip knot and I'm gonna do that next in the next one. Okay, so now it's safely under. So it looks like I might have missed the last one. So I'm just gonna cut it there. If this is my own project I might back out a little bit if it was a whole afghan just to get that one better into position. Again that's a personal choice. So carrying along now then without that straggler continuing to move along and matching each one of the stitches that are you're running into. So I want you to do that on all the way down uh, matching all the blocks. So as you run out of this block then you'll run right into the next one and carry on and do them all the way down so that all the blocks are together and then move along to the next row and do all of those. Once you have all those done in that position then you're going to turn your work and then go in the other direction and secure it across. So I'm going to meet you at the end of this particular row and I'm gonna show you how to turn a corner in the event that you don't wanna do it the way I'm suggesting and you rock to your own drum. <laughs> okay so you beat to your own drum. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm about to turn the corner and I've just come down here and I'm about to turn. Now regardless if this is you're doing it this way or you're just coming straight across all you're just gonna do is at the very middle last one. Okay so it's the middle one of this one. Okay it's the middle one of the one across the road. Okay so you're gonna do that one and then you're gonna go into that same stitch again and go across to the other middle one on this side and that will bring it all together nice and tight at the middle point right there. So you're just gonna continue to just to move down uh, just again going in the, the selected loops that we talked about and you realize that it's really not a big deal to put this stuff together. So I'll meet you at the at this uh, conclusion. I'm gonna show you how to weave in your ends when you're, when you're done um, or if you have to add new string and then we're gonna go around and do two lay layers of the border next. So I'm coming up near the end. Remember you need to go into that middle one of that corner in order to get it. So it's like a chain. So it is not like a chain, it is the chain. So making sure you're going right into the middle one maintaining the, just the one strand of string only and then you're done. So just tie a quick little knot. So just put it back in and feed this through a loop just like so. And what you can just do is that same principle has a, how I showed you of just going in. So what I would recommend is look to the back side and going in gliding it into the fibers keeping it toward the back side of the project. Gliding it in a nice generous length. Don't be cheap about the yarn and then going back in the other direction through a different path. So that was two and the other direction for three. And your project can never stretch in three directions at one time. So therefore that should be permanently in there and should never fall out on you. Once you're satisfied with that just trim it and you're good to go. And that's how you would assemble this whole thing. And um, what I'm gonna do for tutorial sake is that I'm gonna quickly just block this. I'm just gonna go upstairs and just run a steamer over it so that it looks similar to this. And then I'll be right back and then we can uh, start doing the border next. Okay when I last left you I just ran upstairs quickly just a matter of a few minutes ago. I blocked this already with a bit of steam. Remember that you cannot iron anything that is acrylic. So with this particular afghan you can do any size and number of blocks that you want because when you look at it from a block point of view you can realize that these just really rely on just understanding what to do in between the blocks. So you can have a different uh, size. These are pretty generous size blocks so you'll have a nice size afghan. So what I'm gonna teach you now is that we're gonna go around with the border and you're gonna see how we're gonna jump over the, the middle sections here and then every time you get to a corner. So I can teach you effectively how to do a border on this one because the amount of squares that go across and down don't even matter. So it's just all gonna balance out anyway. So let's begin to do the border of level number one of just doing single crochet or double crochets and learning what to do in the middle. So we're gonna start off with green. You should know if you're looking at the pattern that the border is actually done with two different colors of yarn. So the first color is the same color that matches this. It makes these uh, the final boxes look more bold and then the final next layer is actually just 
um, a really cool concept of just a different color which is I'll, I'll probably pull from the center. So let's start off and we're gonna go right into the chain three space and we're going to join the yarn. So just take both of the stragglers over and just join it and pull through like so. And I want you to leave the straggler down on top of the line. We're gonna bury that as we go. So and I want you to chain three. So one, two and three and then double crochet with a total of four more times into the corner. So whenever we hit a corner it'll always be double crochet five. The chaining of three counts as one of the double crochets. So all we're just gonna do then is that we're just gonna move along the edge. Don't forget the first edge here. Sometimes when there's too much in a corner we miss that first stitch and leaving that straggler down on top you're just gonna just double crochet right over top of it. And just going into each one of the stitches going all the way across. So that's no big deal. So what we have to do is that we have to just make sure that when we get to the center where blocks are joining we just have to join it there. Okay so we have to just jump over slightly. So what I'll do is that I'll meet you at the next join spot where the next square runs into this one. So we're now about ready to run into these spaces here. So we're gonna go double crochet all the way to the final stitch that you see. Now this first chain space on this side is going to get two double crochet. That's as hard as it gets and then we immediately jump to the other chain space on the other side and two double crochets and then we begin again just with one double crochet into each stitch going all the way across. So let's uh, get you over to the other corner and uh, that's all the time that you need to do. Sorry that's all that you need to do for this particular going across. When we do the next uh, size or the next uh, layer up we're just gonna double crochet as normal and we don't even have to worry about that because we're filling in the spaces as we go right now. So continue to do that and I'll see you on the next corner. So you will have gone more squares obviously across than I did. So you just know how to handle the middles. Now when you hit back to the outside of a corner again um, you're going to just make sure that you put in five double crochets in the chain three space. So just on this is the next corner. So one, two, three, four and five. And just turn your work and continue down the next side. And again where you need to jump over just make sure you put in two double crochets in the spaces right before the join, two double crochets into the one after the join and continue to double crochet. I'll see you at the end of this revolution where we'll just uh, uh, fasten off and then we'll join our last color in order to go completely around your afghan. As you get all the way back around you're just going to just go into each one of the single or the <laughs> stitches as you go and then you're just gonna join to the top of the beginning chain three. So this is where you're going to split um, or you're gonna stop your yarn. If you would like to continue using the same color that's completely your business. So we're gonna just bring back one color but I wanna show you something on the pattern which I'll just tell you about. So the middle one here Okay so if we pull it up it's the middle color here is what is on the pattern suggesting for the final around. I was thinking how are you gonna tie it in and I looked at the pattern and that's the colors that they pulled was from that particular round. And I think for that for this particular case as well I think that's pretty accurate. So I'm just weaving in my ends as I go so it's out of my way and we're going to begin our next one. So I'm going to bring back the darker color and I wanna start two stitches before I get to a corner. So the corners this time there's going to be five. So remember this chain three counts as one of the double crochets. So the one the the middle one here is the new corner. So I want you to start exactly where you stopped and join on your yarn just like I've shown you before. I want you to make sure you go right into a stitch and not a not a chain uh, not a space at all or it will not look right and I want you to chain three which counts as a double crochet. So one, two, three and then your next one is just one double crochet by itself and then the next one is the middle one of the group of five. And that one is going to have five double crochets in there. So one, two, three, four and five. So that is your new corner and then you just carry right on to the next stitch and continue to go around. So whenever you get to the corner the middle one of the group of five is going to be your new corner. So what I want you to do go all the way around. We'll meet you back up. Let's fasten off and then let's wrap this tutorial up for today. And this is kind of vintage sunflower afghan as well as the city solarium throw. So I'll see you at the end of this revolution. Coming up all the way back around this is it. This is the final 
and uh, just making sure everything is lining up perfectly. Let's just join it to the top of the beginning chain three that we started with just like there and then you just fasten off, weave in your ends and then you're good to go and you got a brand new afghan that you can enjoy. So what I've been doing here is that what we have is the, the bottom side that is facing up. I would actually take my darning needle and finish this off and then this is the front side of your afghan just like so. So I know it's hard to see from that angle but it's really quite pretty. It's really quite nice. It's really kind of vintage and you can also do the city version and it has a lot more different colors at the same time. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as YourInspirations.com. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.